Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's A0302 Scorpion here, and today I'm going to be exploring and elaborating on a bit of what happened on the live stream uh, which Rainbow Six Siege and Ubisoft have put up on YouTube, uh, which was happening during the Pro League seasons, to reveal the new operators, the new maps, and a lot of the gadgets and stuff like that, uh, and some pretty little nifty little things that they put in there as well. So, uh, first up on the agenda... Um, we're going to be discussing the new operators, uh, Habana and Echo. Um, before I get into any of that details, I just want to I just want to point out in the description there is a link to the Pro League game and the finals where we saw these operators and stuff like that. I'm just going to be elaborating a bit on what I saw from within that and what how I think that's going to impact the current meta for Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, so first of all, Habana. Uh, we're going to start with her. She's the first female attacker since the original game release uh, that's been brought in. Uh, her ability is an X cryos launcher, which is basically an ash gun that shoots thermites. But it only shoots, shoots them in little clusters, so it's like six uh, charges. They only create a small gap, uh, which is interesting, because like it means that like it gives you very, very little sort of leeway and maneuverability during gunfights which could be a bit of an issue uh, for her however she can stack them which means she can she can put two above each other she can put them wherever she likes so she can theoretically put one at one end of the map the other at the other they are also detonable from within any part of the map uh, which means theoretically if, if she works with thermite she can put in three different entries and that, that's just with two operators. Imagine if you stuck any more operators onto that. However, she has weaknesses. Uh, one of them being which is uh, Bandit, the other being Mute, because obviously these can get jammed as they are detonatable or fried due to the Bandit uh, charge. She's a three speed, one armor operator. Uh, so she's fast, but she can't. She probably doesn't have a lot of health, so you gotta be careful with that. Uh, so she's versatile, so she's balanced, um, very balanced in fact. Her primary weapons are a supernova and a type 89 shotgun and assault rifle. Uh, these are going to be just, these are going to be really helpful like for long range to medium fights, which the new, which believe it or not they've said about the new map is sort of like that. Um, but we'll get to that later. Her secondary is a PM9 and a P229 submachine gun and pistol. Um, so she's going to be quick to fire. She's going to be pretty... She's, she's quite an aggressive operator. I think she's the aggression which Thermite needs. Because Thermite's more of a team player right now. So she's a very, very push aggressor sort of person. Uh, her gadgets are a Claymore and a Flashbang. Um, which makes her easy to push into the room uh, and stuff like that. She's the claymores to cover her back uh, which is very, again very helpful. Also theory, what you could do actually if you're clever about it you could put, uh, you could use her X cryos on a wall which is reinforced by the way, it can cut through reinforced and it can cut through normal and then put a claymore behind it. Uh, if, you pl if you place it right the claymore will be able to kill someone if you set it up right. Um, so she's going to be quite interesting. She's going to be she's very versatile, and is very useful, uh, as she can provide distractions and entryways for the other team members. Next, I'm going to talk about is Echo, who's the defender. Uh, his ability he's a first male defender. He's a one speed three armor operator. He uses a yokai drone, which can shoot nausea darts, and it cloaks. It's a quad co quadcopter, which allows it to fly. So it's like it manages the same way as an attacking drone. It can fly, cloak, and shoot nausea darts, which will throw the enemy off a bit. And that's going to be interesting. Also, it spots people, which is obviously you know, I hope, uh, which is going to be very helpful and very useful because it can be used in two different ways. It can be used to assist your team in battles. It can also be used at entryways to find out where they are. It's, it's, an, it's a more movable Valkyrie camera. That's the way I think of it with a Twitch attachment. That's what I think of it. 
Um, he's got limited attach. He's got limited uh, darts. Obviously, I think it's three he's got, and um, maybe only one. But they're they're going to be very interesting, very useful in combat scenarios, definitely. Um, but you got to be careful with him. You got to be patient with him. That's the way that it's been set up because if his drone uncloaks when it's moving, so you got to like sort of be patient about where you place it. You got to be patient how you move it because the enemy will see it. If the enemy can see it if they look at it close enough, but the enemy will see it if you're moving it. That's guaranteed. And um, the next thing is his primary and his primary weapons is again supernova and the type 89 shotgun and assault rifle. So this is going to be the same attack and primary weapons and the same secondary weapons, which is the PM9 and the P229 submachine gun and pistol. His gadgets, however, are barbed wire. Uh, or deployable shield so they're gonna be quite interesting because he's more of a kind of guy because if it's the armor he's more of a last resort that's what they've discussed he's the kind of guy who's sitting on the lines at the back and defend but he uses his drone to get to the front line so he's fighting on the front lines and his drone whereas at the back he's there in the room defending so it's gonna be quite interesting because it almost acts like a second operator a second defense tactic which is very key I think is going to make a big difference. Uh, again, though, he can be out, he can be caught out with an IQ or a Thatcher or even a Twitch if he's not got his drone at a high enough point. Uh, the, now we're going to move on to the map and discuss a bit about it. The map is pretty much a dojo on a skyscraper. It's set in Nagoi. Oh, uh, sorry, I just butchered that name. Nagoi, Nag Nagoi, 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 Nagoi. I, I don't know. Anyway, it's set in Nagoi or whatever, Japan. I'm not gonna dwell on it too much. Uh, the spawns are quite interesting for this one because you've got the north spawn and the south spawn. The north spawn is very, very, very safe, sort of back uh, way a bit. It's like a uh, Hereford parking lot, uh, whereas the south one is very much you're up there, you're ready to repel, you're ready to make an aggressive play. It's high risk, high reward, so if you get caught out on the south one, then that could be an issue for your team, they could lose a valuable member, and stuff like that. Um, the map, what we've told, what we've been told about is, the well, the rooms and the bomb placements and things like that, they seem very uh, fair places, very fairly placed, there's no real way to, like, get there's no real advantage in it to anyone. It's mostly relying on skill rather than operators and versatility and adaptability. Um, there is no basement in it, which is probably one of the first maps I've not had a basement in, which is quite interesting. It's medium to long ranged, um, so you're looking probably more at assault rifles and submachine guns. Uh, it's got a lot of open spaces, which means it's a very open map, which means, again, there's probably going to be a lot of, again... Uh, taking it time, sort of pushing in slowly, more skill based. Um, there's lots of cover and there's lots of corners, uh, so that's going to provide a lot of cover and a lot of interesting combat and gunfights. Then you've got that the map is very destructible, highly destructible, which again is interesting. Uh, that's going to help a lot. Now that's the sort of map. Um, Again, it's like it's high risk, high reward, pretty much. But you got to take your time, use range, stay back, and let the, let use a lot of distractions. I believe is going to be the way forward for that one. Uh, new character skins are also a thing now. So if you if you see if you look at the image what I've just put up on the screen, there is a sledge and an ash skin, um, which is interesting. We've only saw those two at the moment, but. This is in, this is revolutionary as it's going to provide new body, full body skins rather than just a case of, oh here's a new headgear. There's also going to be a lot new, a lot more new camels and a lot new charms, which uh, you can see on the screen as well, um, and that's going to be really interesting. I think I think that's pretty neat. I think that's pretty cool. Um, more more than less. Then we've got other things which is like. I saw this, which is Montaigne. Uh, he now has a shield camel, which camouflages his shield in a woodland pattern, which could suggest that others are probably going to get this as well, such as maybe Blitz and things like that. 
Um, so yeah, I think that that's really all that's going to happen. The meta's going to change a bit. I think we're going to see a lot more play of Bandit, a lot more play of Mute, a lot more play of um, Thermite, Thatcher, Hibana. Shield Operators, I think, are going to be more key in this one as well. However, we haven't got to Chanka's turret yet, uh, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, I think I think that it's going to leave a good mark. We might even get a Fuse Camel for a shield, uh, which is really interesting. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can see a lot of new sort of lines of play coming up in the next meta. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be quite interesting. But, uh, yeah, guys, I think that's me. Uh, hope you are all looking forward to it. Remember, it's the 14th of November, which is Thursday. This, com this coming Thursday, um, it will be available to season pass holders uh, for the operators, but it will be available to all of you. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video very much, and uh, don't forget to, if you enjoyed it, click the like button if possible, uh, even hit uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel and want to see more Siege content. Also, I'm going to I'm gonna ask you to, again, down in the description, just reminding you, the Pro League Finals link will be there, along with the channel, go over there and hit them up a like, and a th hit them up a like, and hit them up a subscribe, and uh, you guys, it's been AO3 user to Scorpion, and uh, Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye.